It is so good. You have to read it. You have to. It's not up for debate. <laughs> My name is Tori and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be filming my May wrap-up. So this month I read five books. I read 1,505 pages. I had one two-star book, two three-star books, and two five-star books. As far as genres go, I read two YA contemporary, one fantasy, one poetry, and one nonfiction. And there was one book I DNF'd, which I did count in my page count, but I didn't count in my total books count. So the first book I read this month was Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. So if you watched my May haul video, you saw this book. So this book I gave three stars. I think I'm gonna make a whole video review about this book because wow, I have a lot of feelings about this book. <laughs> but it is a sort of hate to love romance, kind of. There's a little bit of that in the beginning, but it kind of goes away after a little bit. So this book is told from the alternating perspectives of Eleanor and Park, the two main characters. I gave this book three stars because I really felt like Eleanor was just kind of unlikable as a character. I felt like she was very self-pitying. Don't get me wrong, I understand her situation that she was in, but I still feel like there were some things that she said that just didn't really sit right with me. But the reason this still got three stars was because I really, really loved Park as a character. So this book kind of fell in the middle for me. That's gonna be a whole nother video. Oh my God. <laughs> So the second book I read was The Locker by Richie Tankerly Cusack. This was the one I DNF'd. Uh, oh boy. So I DNF'd this at 17%, which is only 35 pages in. It was told really weirdly. Just the writing style was really weird. The overall premise of the story was also really weird. So basically the story is about this girl who lives with her younger brother and her aunt. And her aunt is supposed to be this super crazy, eclectic woman. Hello! I only wanted to say hi. Well, no, I have makeup on. And because she's so crazy and eclectic and can't be kept down, she does this thing where, like, every couple of months, she'll just take out a map of the United States, and then one of the three of them will just point to a random place with their eyes closed, and that's how they decide where they're going to move next, which is absolutely bonkers. That makes zero sense whatsoever. Also, her younger brother. Oh my god. First of all, his name is Dobkin. He sounds- the name sounds like a goblin. He sounds like he's a goblin. He talks like a 60-year-old man. He's supposed to be in kindergarten, and he talks like a 60-year-old man. So right after this scene where she opens her locker, what, what even was her name? Marley with two E's. So there's this scene right after Marley opens her locker, she gets hit in the face with this like really weird smell and then she passes out. So she's on her way walking home with her younger brother and then she's telling him about this for some reason. She's telling her like six-year-old brother about this for some reason and he just goes, the smell, he said, you know what it is. No, I shook my head at him as I kept repeating, no, no, yes you do, he said, so quit blocking it out of your mind. I don't know. That horrible smell, I couldn't stand it. Fear, Dobkin murmured. What, what did you say? The smell of fear, you remember, you smelled it once before. What the hell was that? Okay, hi, could you guys let me know if this is like annoying when I keep popping in like this? But while I was reading it, I was thinking, okay, maybe he's gonna become some sort of like supernatural being and that's why he talks like this. Maybe that's like a plot twist down the line. But no, I read a ton of reviews on Goodreads from people who actually finished it. Even some like four or five star reviews were like, yeah, this was a really good book. I really like the plot twists, but I don't understand what the hell was up with that six year old. So that's just like how he talks. There's no plot twist. It gives nothing to the story. He just talks like that at six years old. And it's so unsettling. This is supposed to be a thriller book, but that's probably the most unsettling part of this book. This is like a YA mystery, thriller, horror kind of thing. I don't even know. 
It was, it was bad. It's from like the 90s, so like, sorry for the weird lighting change, my light like turned off, but it's fine. So the next book I read this month was This Is Where It Ends by I'm Not Gonna Pronounce Her Name. Again, this was another book in my May haul. So I initially gave this book four stars. This is a book about a school shooting. It takes place from four different perspectives. So initially, I gave this book four stars because I thought it was a pretty good story. I liked the writing style. I liked the characters. It was, it was a pretty good story. Then I started thinking more about how it was written and I realized that the beginning was just way too hard for me to get into because the four perspectives were thrown at you all at once and it was very like an info dump in the beginning for four completely different characters that you had to keep track of and it was really hard to get into and I just really didn't like that part so I docked it down to three stars. Then I was looking through a couple Goodreads reviews and I'll link this one down in the description but I saw one from this girl and she brought up so many good points. The characters are really really bland and they have such black and white morality. The good guys are good and the bad guys are bad. That's it. Tyler the character who was the shooter. He was just evil. I feel like there were a couple scenes where she tried giving him some sort of redemption because one of the perspectives you get is from his ex-girlfriend, but he was just plain evil. And she wanted us to believe that the death of his mom turned him into this awful, awful person. And honestly, the characters are just pretty unlikable. Now that I like actually look back at it, everything that these characters did just weren't great. Also, not to mention, in between every chapter, there are these like, I don't know how to describe them, but like little bits from the internet, if that makes any sense. Like there's a couple blog posts and the blog posts are from a girl who's one of the teacher's daughters, but you don't find that out until like almost the end of the book. So you just have no idea who this girl is posting these blog posts. They also have these sort of Twitter threads that personally, I hate when authors do that. I really don't like when they try writing Twitter threads in a book because it just, it never works. There's a part of me that kind of wants to check out this author's other book. It seems like something that I would like a little bit more. It seems similar to the premise of The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. So this author's other book is called Before I Go and all I know is that it's about this kid's girlfriend or ex-girlfriend or ex-best friend or something like that who was in an accident and passed away right when the main character was flying out to see her, I think, something like that. It looks like it's told through a multimedia kind of thing where first there's like a regular chapter, then there's like a transcript of a phone call, then there's like a letter. And personally, I typically really enjoy when books are written like that. So I might wanna check out that other book, but I'm not sure. Stay tuned for that, I guess. The third book I read this month was Glass Sword. The second installment of the Red Queen series by Victoria Aveyard. I, of course, I gave this book five stars. Amazing, phenomenal, show-stopping, fantastic. If you want, you can go check out my reading vlog right there. Or there, I don't know. Warning though, that does have spoilers. So if you haven't read it yet, I will give you a quick overview of basically what I said in that video right now. I love the characters. I love the characters. I love the characters. Their relationships are amazing. Their dialogue is amazing. They're super fleshed out. Victoria Aveyard does an amazing job of making sure that you care about each and every one of these characters. These are spoilers for the first Red Queen book, so if you haven't read Red Queen, skip to here. Maven is an amazing villain. Like, he wasn't even in most of the book, but just his impact and effect that he had on Mare and Cal is amazing. The endings, because there are kind of, there are kind of multiple endings to this. They're heartbreaking. Oh my God. And I went back and looked through a couple of lines, a couple of chapters, and there was so much amazing foreshadowing. Oh my gosh. I cannot recommend the Red Queen series enough. And I just got King's Cage, the third book, and I'm so excited to read it. But again, you can, Check out my reading vlog about that. The fourth book I read this month was The Witch Doesn't Burn, you can't see that, was The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is the second book in the Women Are Some Kind of Magic series. 
this is this is one of the poetry books that I read. This was another book that kind of had its rating change. So initially I gave this four stars because I kind of liked it, but I wasn't super, super crazy about it. But then I knocked it down to three stars because it was okay. I definitely liked the first one better. I feel like the first one told much more of a story and a story about her life. This one, it just feels like yelling, if that makes any sense. So there were a couple poems that I really, really liked. Like for example, I really liked this one on page 38 that says, they scratched it out of the history books, but on all the great innovations, you will find the scorch marks in the shape of a woman's magnificent handprint. Do not forget, we need to be the history books now. Women are libraries about to burst. I, I really liked that one. I thought that was a cool one. I also really liked this one. It's a two page poem kind of. And so one of them is titled, how to prevent getting sexually assaulted. And the other one says how to prevent sexually assaulting someone. So the first one, how to prevent getting sexually assaulted. There's just, it's just scribbles. But then the other one, it just says, don't rape 16 times. And I really like that. I thought that was clever and I do agree with that. I think that that's a point that doesn't get made enough. But then there were also a couple that just felt downright hateful towards men in some senses. And some of them were just kind of cringy. Like one of them on page 107, bitch, he spits, witch, he sneers. And I say, actually, I'm both. Mm. Not the craziest about that. Also, I think I realized that I'm just not super crazy about this style of poetry. I don't know if you can really see this, but where it's just like a couple of sentences stylized like that. Like I'm just, I'm not super crazy about that poetry style. Three stars. The last book I read this month was Sounds Like Me, My Life So Far in Song by Sarah Bareilles. Yes, my bookmark is still here cause like I'm not technically finished with it but like I have like two chapters to go and I'm gonna finish it today. So like, whatever, I'm, I'm I finished it. So this has been on my shelf for a little while. I got this when we went to go see Waitress on Broadway because this was in the gift shop and I was like, I love Sarah Bareilles, I really wanna read that. And I, I do love Sarah Bareilles and I did really wanna read this. I really liked this, I really enjoyed it. For those of you that watched my last monthly wrap up, it does remind me a little bit of You'd Be Paranoid 2 by Austin Knight, but I think that's mostly because it's just, it's by a musician and it gives you a little bit of an inside look into the industry. But meanwhile, Austin's book was more a story of his life and life advice and advice to go into the music industry, sure. But I think it was more life stories and stuff like that. Hers definitely revolves a lot more around finding yourself in music and finding your passion in music, which was something I really related to and I really enjoyed reading about that. Hers is also a bit more about songwriting and turning your pain and turning your life stories and turning every heartbreak that you have into songs and into music and making your heartbreak something beautiful. I feel like this would be a really good book if you like music, if you want to go into the music industry, or if you're just a big fan of Sarah Bareilles. It's a, it's a good book. Hello, it's me, Tori from June. Whoa, with blue hair that you can't see on camera because my hair is too freaking dark. So please ignore my messy room, but I'm just gonna tack this on here because I never uploaded or even finished editing my May wrap up. So here we are. This month I read two books. Wow, I know. <laughs> One was a YA contemporary and the other one was a romance. I read one four star book and one five star book. So all in all, actually a pretty great month. <laughs> and altogether this month, I read 760 pages. The first book I read was Mosquito Land by David Arnold. I gave this book four stars and I really, really liked it. So I've already read The Strange Fascinations of Noah Hypnotic, also by David Arnold. That one is definitely one of my favorite books I've ever read. It was a realistic fiction with a sort of sci-fi twist that was really, really cool. And after I read Mosquito Land, I'm starting to notice that that happens with a lot of David Arnold's books, or at least as far as these two go, where they're realistic fiction with a little bit of a fantastical element, and I love that. The fantastical element isn't necessarily magic or anything like that. It's more that you just have to suspend your disbelief thinking this would never happen in real life, but I wish it would. Like it's that kind of fantasticalness. But I did give it four stars because there were a couple unbelievable parts and I know that like I know what I just said, but these like scenes kind of crossed the threshold a little bit. Like they pushed it too far. There was one scene 
where they were at a baseball game and there was this mom who was just being super, super rude to her kids for whatever reason. Mim, the main character, she just says like a basic thing of just, hey, stop being rude to your kids. And everyone claps. And I genuinely had to shut the book and walk away for a minute. <laughs> there are also a couple of lines and a couple of character descriptions that do feel a tad fat phobic. And it's not necessarily that it's blatant and explicit. I think it's more just internalized for the character. But the thing is, she doesn't change that behavior by the end of the book is what I'm trying to say. And also I wasn't super crazy about the ending. Like not the ending as a whole, the last line, the last like two lines, which I know is like super nitpicky and super specific, but for the entire book, pretty much, you thought that they were gonna be building to this one line and then they didn't. It just would have made so much more sense to have this one line as the last line, but then they he just kind of didn't, which honestly in itself wouldn't have been enough to dock this a star, but along with what I said before, that just like kind of solidifies its place at four stars. I did really enjoy this book and I think it's definitely worth a read. The only other book I read in the month of June was Red, White, and Royal Blue and oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I read this for Romance-a-thon. Oh my gosh, okay. I gave this book five stars in case you can't tell my, by, by my reaction. This is the first romance book I've ever read, like one that's truly, purely romance. Yes, I know what I said and I stand by it because Dear John no longer exists in my mind. I've just, I've completely erased it. It was so good. I'm making an entire separate video on this. So I'm, I gave this book five stars. It's a romance. It's amazing. You should read it. I added this book to my all-time favorite shelf on Goodreads. It's, I love this book so much. There was so much hype about it on booktube and I was like, okay, I don't wanna listen to the hype too much cause I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like it that much. This 100% lives up to the hype. It is so good. You have to read it. You have to. It's not up for debate. <laughs> that is all I read for the month of June and back to Tori from May to do her little outro. <laughs> So that's it for this month. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you are having an amazing, amazing day. And this is Tori, signing off.